Alright guys, now it is time for the top 5 segment and holy shit, Jason, our podcast producer, is making these motherfuckers so damn hard. He is, he ain't making it easy, no, no. no. And I mean, rightfully so, rightfully so, it's supposed to be like top 5 overall, ever, like, but damn, <laughs> man, damn, thank you so much for making this so good, bro, you're doing yes. great, you're doing great things, but this week it is top 5 cult classics. Mm. Holy shit. Like, it's so hard. This one was tough. It, like, I mean, going back and thinking about it, and I mean, there's multiple movies that have been on other lists of ours, other top five lists of ours. Sure. But, I mean, you know, I'm trying to think about, and for my list anyway, I was, for at least most of them, um, I was trying to think about huge cult standalone movies like mm -hmm. that didn't have, like, uh, sequels or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But like I said... The majority of my list. Um, number five for me is Office Space. Stiebler. I'll burn down this fucking place, Stiebler. <laughs> but I mean, Jennifer Aniston, uh, Lumbar, fucking Lumbar. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that movie was like, it was basically The Office the movie like right, it right. was it was so good it was so good i mean so many like people that went on to do bigger and better things in that film and i mean not a lot of people watch that one because it's hilarious it's I, dry as fuck like so yeah. funny uh, gary cole just that's my maybe the most favorite role i've ever seen him in right like, he's just fantastic in that film i i, I don't i don't know how, any other way to say it i know just brilliant brilliant okay my number five mr kurt russell Escape from New York, mm. Snake. Yes. If you've never seen this movie, watch it. It's like a, a classic 80s, you know, action adventure film, but it is the most twisted out there kind of a thing you will ever see. Um, it, it's just brilliant. Like you said, I don't know how many people really saw it, but it most definitely has a huge cult file. If you were born or anywhere near or in and around in the 80s, you watched this film. You right. love this film. So, And if you're a Kurt Russell fan, they're constantly talking about a sequel to this thing yeah. or a reboot to this thing, yeah. but it never kind of happens. So, And I hope it doesn't because that would kill everything as far as its cult status. Yeah, Just exactly. Escape from New York. Just leave it alone. Leave it alone. <laughs> um, my number four, taking it back to the 70s, late 70s, The Warriors. Yes. Come out to play. Yes. Such a good one. It is about like. Proud of you, a the, 70s film. Right? Yeah. Like, fucking like gangs of New York, basically. Yes. Like every Everybody has their own cliques, and they were just trying to get back to Coney Island. This group of guys, like, they got framed from some shit they didn't do, but it was just so damn good because each one of the gang members are, like, their own individual person. That is probably their own individual personality traits that could be found in all of us. Mm. Like, we all have the aggressive side. We all have the quiet side, the thinker. We all have the leader status. We all have, like, the backseat status, and I feel like... All of those different aspects of oneself were shown in this gang of guys. So mm. it was so good, man. So good. And then Rockstar Games did a Warriors video game, which like was so badass. So good. So yes, number four for me, the Warriors. Good. Yeah. I love the explanation. Too. Yeah. Fantastic. Great. Number four for me started as a cult classic. Then kind of found some ground, and then when Quentin kind of just took off, it, it, uh, and now everybody has seen it. Everybody. But when it first came out, it was kind of one of those rare, you know, not everybody saw it. Like, you know, if you did see it, you were like questioning, what the fuck is this? What am I watching? Pulp Fiction. Yes. Pulp Fiction. So damn good. Oh, man, the briefcase, the, oh, you know, the dancing, and just like the, the I mean, Bruce Willis, Ving Rhames, like all these insanely awesome people, Uma Thurman, John Travolta, all these like crazy people in this film. It was just epic. Yeah. You know, talk about an out there kind of a storyline where you had no fucking clue. No idea. What was going on. This is like Tarantino at his ultimate like best, like what the fuck. Exactly. You know, it um. Just brilliant. Yeah, fucking my favorite part about the whole film is fucking Samuel Jackson at the very end. My wallet's the one that says badass motherfucker on <laughs> That's it. Right. Like I I honestly have almost bought badass motherfucker wallets so yes, many times yes. because of this film. But anytime Samuel Jackson is on screen in this movie, it's so damn good. Especially when he's like doing the preaching thing before he kills that guy. Like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. So damn like the good. The entire conversation about the what they call the quarter pounder with the yeah, royal Allen. Yeah. Like, that whole context of that conversation is worth the film alone. Exactly. Like I, it's just so good, man. So exactly, good. exactly. 
Well, my number three, all right, all right, all right, <laughs> was the first time anybody had ever seen Matthew McConaughey on yes. screen, uh, dazed and confused. So many of these stars went on to do bigger and better things. I mean, this was such a huge cult like indie film, especially for like uh, stoners. I'm just gonna mm. say it. Just mm-hmm. gonna say it. But fucking like uh, Richard uh, Linklater, um, yeah. the yep. fucking director. I mean, he did Slacker and a million and other indie projects like he inspired so many people like kevin smith to become filmmakers Mm -hmm. and do these amazing things but like i mean you got jason london like i said matthew mcconaughey uh joey lauren adams like ben affleck ben affleck was in that motherfucker a lot of kevin smith's peeps yeah yeah i mean you know when you think about it (laughs) exactly but this was such a good freaking movie um i grew my hair to be exactly like randy (laughs) pink floyd like i was that motherfucker but so yeah go if you haven't seen days and confused be sure to go watch that shit yeah Yes, yes. My number three is yet another filmmaker who inspired an entire generation of filmmakers to come up and do their thing. I'm talking about Mr. Sam Raimi. And if you know Sam Raimi, then you know where I'm going with this one. My number three, The Evil Dead. Mm. Bruce Campbell. Groovy, baby. (laughs) I mean, it is the epitome of cult horror movies, okay? I mean, so many movies have tried to spawn off of this and and follow in this kind of a, a, a genre of horror and they've all failed miserably yeah. like like you just what Raimi was able to do with Bruce Campbell and and, and pull off in that film was absolute and the sequel was good Army of Darkness I mean you know um and I didn't hate the the new remake with Jane Levy I I, I thought it was kind of good but I just don't think you're ever going to capitalize on what Raimi was able to do with the, I mean, that's just pillow talk. Baby. I mean, like, uh, there are so many. That's my boomstick. Yeah. So many lines that Bruce Campbell delivered in that film that are like iconic one liners now that people say relentlessly. Like, I can't even tell you. Right. It, it's one of those films that once you see it, it's with you forever. Yeah. So, uh, Evil Dead. The Evil Dead. Evil Dead. All right. <laughs> my number two. Oh, I mean, I teased it a little bit earlier uh, in the State of the Company address, but of course, I have to put. Kevin Smith on this motherfucker. You have to. I mean, of course. So I'm going to the original Clerks. Mm. Oh my goodness. This thing shot for $23,500 on credit card debt. It is like the definition of just saying fuck it and doing what you love to do, becoming a filmmaker. And like this man, the quick stop is like literally a fucking real place that he borrowed from his boss. He worked there and like they shot the whole thing at night basically so that it wouldn't interrupt the business during the daytime. But this film is just so good. And I mean, so many great talents like uh, Jason Mewes and like Brian O'Haran and like uh, Jeff Anderson, like Mm. we're getting exposure in this entertainment world that they definitely deserved and playing fucking hockey on the rooftop like this is such a good movie and filmed in all black and white as well so yes so damn good which is always epic always because kevin smith is a true filmmaker he okay is. black and white baby black and white he's right <laughs> all right my number two i know uh, just send send the comments my way now but i'm gonna say it <laughs> the dark knight trilogy was not christian bale's most epic best role okay (laughs) this was american psycho Uh. oh my gosh man american psycho was so badass the epitome of the 80s 80s yuppies hardcore do anything to become rich and successful Uh, this guy psychopath just Killing people, chopping them up. Right? I mean, like, just like uh, playing to the music of Huey Lewis. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and just like it was every time I watch it, it is so badass. Hell yeah. Reese Witherspoon, a young Reese Witherspoon is in there. Just it's an amazingly epic look at the 80s, is, is how I view it in giant contextualized over the top, you know, Hell craziness. Yeah. But uh, and they tried to do like a, a, a remake of that with yeah. Mia Kunis, like a female version. She was apparently a survivor of one of the victims of, of, of mm. the original. Yeah. yeah, you can't top American no. Psycho. Come on, Never. man! But it is definitely still a cult film classic. Oh, yeah. Like if you come across it, people, it's one of those films. If you turn it on, it's inevitably at a scene where you just can't look away. Exactly, and you're like, oh, I got, I gotta watch this. Exactly, like, what the fuck? Gotta fucking I mean, finish that yeah. shit. But so damn good, man. So damn good. 
My number one. Say a lot to my little friend. <laughs> Fucking Scarface, yes. man. This is a huge cold classic gangster film. I mean, you got Al Pacino, Michelle Pfeiffer, mm. like so many epic people. I mean, uh, you've noticed with all of these movies, like they have had amazing casts. Yes. Like that's the thing. I mean, that's, I feel like, of course, the story, but uh, when you bring in an amazing cast to beautify that's a new word beautify the story yes um it just makes it so damn good and especially like being an immigrant coming over and like his version of the american dream and i mean al pacino who doesn't love al pacino so i mean yes scarface fucking cockroach like yes so damn good man (laughs) so damn good that's a it's an 80s film as well, 1983. Yes, it is. I'm, I'm, 70s and 80s. Look at this. Killing I'm rubbing it. off. I'm rubbing off. Killing it. All right. My number one, it's impossible not to have on the list. It's right. impossible not to be there because it is everybody's cult favorite. Everybody knows it. And if you don't know it, what are you doing? <laughs> it's the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Hell yeah. If you have not been in a movie theater and done the Rocky Horror Picture Show experience with the toast and all the kind of the props and just being like, it is the most epic thing. It is a rite of passage. If you haven't done it, when we can get back in the theaters, find a theater that is showing the Rocky Horror Picture Show and, and, and just entertain yourself. Go. You're, you'll be so happy. Talk about a cast, right? Susan right. Sarandon, Barry Bostwick, uh, Meatloaf, Curry. I mean, just this movie is epic. It's a musical. So good. It is like the most over the top out there. Like I said, interactive type cult horror musical comedy film. I don't even know like like what. I, and now I feel, I feel like Riley was trying to describe Doom Patrol. I like. Right? I don't exactly. know how to describe <laughs> the Rocky Horror Picture Show in one sentence. It's yeah. just like everything wrapped and smashed up into one. It's, it's so just good. so good, man. So, so good. damn good, man. So damn good. What are your top five cult yes. classics, man? We want to know. Be sure to comment below if you're watching on YouTube or direct message us if you're listening to it on a podcast platform. Messages us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, anywhere you have us. Uh, we will definitely want to freaking know. Um, if you're watching this video on YouTube, thank you so much. Like and subscribe to all those YouTube things. And if you're listening on the podcast, <laughs> <laughs> platforms be sure to watch the video on youtube do that be kind and rewind yes. and go back and watch it on youtube it's so good so good and of course shout out to jason for get this guys 24 straight weeks the next 24 straight weeks he's got them ready yeah he's got them ready he, they're in the in in the sling ready to go and no repeats no like this guy is like on it so you know good. and so whew. I don't know. Hell this, yeah. it, next week's just tough for him. Dude. That's a little, that's a little tease right yeah. there. Just wait. It's uh, going to be a tough one, goodness though. Goodness gracious, man. Great top five <laughs> segment, man. Great top five segment.